as I know, welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, hello, hi. Uh, so today I'm doing my August wrap up. I have filmed <laughs> one previously, but that that was very long. So today, well not today, now I will try to do a quick one. <laughs> and funny. All right. So let's just power through these. If I have a lot of feelings about a particular book, I will have done a review or will do a like full review and I will put links below or I will card above. So without further ado, let's get going. The first book I read this month was The Worst Witch by Jill Murphy. It is a children's fantasy book. It is about a girl called Mildred Hubble and it kind of follows her misadventures, I guess, in her first year at Miss Cackle's Academy for Witches. Mildred's a pretty nice girl. She's a bit of a disaster magnet. She's kind of clumsy, makes a lot of mistakes, and if there's trouble she's probably involved. So I gave this book three out of five stars. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, not heaps of character development, but it's just a fun kind of kids read. Has a, kind of a Harry Potter vibe to it as well. The second book I read this month was Julie Gordon, Exchange Student by Estelle Gray. This is an Australian book. Uh, it was published in 1975. I made a deal with mum that I would read her favourite kind of teenage book if she would read my favourite kind of teenage book. So this is what I got. Um, the story is about Julie Gordon and she is accepted to the exchange program and moves to America and lives with a family in Cincinnati, Ohio. And a lot of the book is sort of about the differences between America and Australia and the whole kind of process of getting there and the adventures she has while she's there. And there's a kind of a little bit of a beginnings of a romance but not really. Overall I gave it three out of five stars. The next book I read was How to Tell If Your Cat Is Plotting to Kill You by The Oatmeal. I think it's a, um, what do you call it, like a webcomic thing. Um, you know, bits of it were funny, it, you know, but yeah, it, it was kind of, yeah take it or leave it so I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Cousin Omiya Prisoner of Heaven by Catherine Lasky. It is part of the Royal Diary series published by Scholastic. There's, a, there's 20 in the series. Um, so this one follows Princess Kazu. She is the sister of the current emperor and at this particular point, it's like 1858, there's a lot of stuff happening politically in Japan, uh, the US and, and that have sort of forced them to open their doors to the rest of the world after like a strict isolationist policy. Uh, uh, Kazu is engaged to a, a prince, uh, part of the nobility, probably a, a very distant cousin. Um, and at this point, the emperor kind of decides that he can get a bit of political leverage by marrying his sister off to the future shogun. The shogun is like the military leader, uh, ruler of the country. So it sort of looks at a lot of Japanese customs and all the politics and social stuff that's happening at the time, that was all great. I did have problems with um, the love story between Kazu and her former fiancé, uh, Prince Arisugawa, um, like she has clandestine meetings with him and sorry that just wouldn't happen. It, it just wouldn't. So. Uh, kind of annoy me, so I bumped it down to 2.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Waking Gods by Sylvain Nouvelle. It is sci-fi 
Uh, it's the second in the Themis Files trilogy. Uh, it kind of starts ten years after the first book. Uh, Dr. Rose Franklin is head of the scientific division of the Earth Defense Corps and the beginning of the book sort of starts off with a giant robot landing in London and just kind of standing there menacingly for days and everyone's kind of scrambling to work out why it's here, can we communicate with it, is it going to kill us, all that sort of stuff. Um, I, yeah, I like science, I the plot was again surprising and enthralling like the first book so and I, I like the characters and I like the narrative style which is through like told through reports and like logs and interviews and like field recordings and stuff like that so I gave this book five out of five stars the next book I read was The Bird and the Blade by Megan Bannon it is a YA historical fiction novel with like maybe a teeny bit of fantasy. It is a retelling of the Opera Tuendo from the point of view of the slave girl. So in this book, uh, we follow Jim Hua, who is a slave in the Kipchak Khanate. And it follows her journey with the Khan, Tamur, and his son, Prince Kalaf, uh, as they flee from would be assassins and who have like taken over their carnate. Uh, along the way they're trying to work out how the hell they're going to get it back. So uh, their journey eventually leads them to Khan Balik which is the capital of the Yuan dynasty and to the Great Khan. So Kalaf has to, well Kalaf is seeking Turandoc's hand in marriage and to do that he has to answer three like impossible riddles. Oh no, Turandoc uh, is the daughter of the Great Khan. So yay, instant you know power and everything returned. So I really really loved the characters and their interactions. Um, the story liked a bit of suspense because you know that they're going to end up in Kambalik and you know with Kalaf answering riddles so yeah that part of it was a tiny bit lacking for me so I overall I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon Maguire. It is the first in the Wayward Children series. Um, currently there are three books out, the fourth is coming out in the next couple months. So. Every Heart of Doorway is set at Eleanor West's home for wayward children, which is basically a boarding school for kids who have gone through doors and portals to other worlds and they've ended up back in this world and their parents don't know how to deal with them and they don't really want to be here anymore and Eleanor's school sort of tries to teach them how to cope you know, with being in this world. The story starts off with the arrival of Nancy and pretty soon after she, she's been to like an underworld or, or something like that and pretty soon after she arrives uh, people start getting murdered. So Nancy and her friends try to work out who the murderer is so they can stop them before they strike again. So overall I really enjoyed it. It's a very short book it's like 170 pages or something um but yeah it, it was really great I like the characters I like the plot I like the world building so I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars the next book I read number eight was Raisins and Almonds by Kerry Greenwood it is the ninth book in the Franny Fisher series so it's a historical fiction sort of mystery book. Um, Phryne is a lady detective who is working in like 1920s Melbourne. So in this book she has taken a Jewish lover, very convenient, and she is then asked to find out who killed a Jewish man in a bookstore. 
so they can like exonerate uh, a woman who's been falsely accused and imprisoned for the murder. So uh, the writing was you know, really great. Uh, I love the characters. I've watched the TV series, so that kind of affects kind of how I imagine it, I guess. Um, but it was still really enjoyable and yeah, I gave it four out of five stars. I'm, I'm not going to rave about it or anything because I don't have time. Uh, book number nine, uh, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. It is a fantasy. It is meant to be like a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. It is about a girl called Miriam whose father is a moneylender. He's not a very good moneylender. He doesn't like collect the debts that are owed to him. So when Miriam is old enough, she goes out and she does it because she's sick of being cold in winter and starving while everybody else in the town you know, are you know, doing really well. So we also have two other main characters that aren't really talked about in the synopses, but um, yeah, they're fabulous. I have done a full review. I will link it. Um, overall, I gave it 4.5, no, 4 out of 5 stars. Um, I, it, my only real major problem with it was it was very, very long and there was a lot of fluff that could have been cut out. But I loved the main characters and the world building was great. I was cold the entire time, pretty much. And, uh, well, yeah, plot, all good. So, the next book I read was Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. It is a YA fantasy dystopia. It is the first in a duology. Uh, <clears throat> it is about two sisters called Serena and Nomi. They live in an Italian inspired world where women have no rights. Serena has trained her entire life to become a grace, which is like the epitome of what a woman is meant to be, you know, elegant, obedient, silent, that sort of thing. Um, while her sister is a bit more rebellious and, you know, wants more out of her life than that. Um, the basic story is that Nomi does something wrong and her sister Serena takes the fall for it. So Serena gets sent off to an island to fight to the death um, and Nomi ends up becoming a grace and she has to try and use this position to and her influence to rescue or free her sister. So uh, uh, I gave this book two out of five stars. Uh, I had kind of, I found it kind of predictable. I didn't think the characters were developed wonderfully. I, Nomi's character, they could, have, yeah. I have, I have thoughts. They'll be in a carded review thing I'll put up. Um, yeah, it just felt very average to me, so, mm. uh, the next book I read was Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Shannon McGuire. It is the second book in the Wayward Children series. It's a fantasy, YA fantasy, kind of, obviously. It follows the story of Jack and Jill and what happened before they ended up at Eleanor West's home for Wayward Children, which is in the first book. So basically, Jacqueline is moulded to be her mother's perfect daughter, you know, obedient and quiet and covered in frills and lace and bows and pink and all that sort of stuff. And she has to hide, you know, her intelligence. Gillian, on the other hand, is moulded to be her father's perfect child, you know, a tomboy, rambunctious adventurous, all that sort of stuff, but she has to hide her femininity. So, 
when they're 12 years old, they end up going through a doorway into a world called the Moors. And in this world, they finally sort of are able to become who they are, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it, it is a great book. I gave it four out of five stars. And yeah, I, I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the series. Alright, so the next book I finished was Just One Damned Thing After Another by Jodie Taylor. I listened to the audiobook for this, which was narrated by Zara Ram. Um, and it was, it was hilarious. Uh, it is the first book in the Chronicles of St. Mary's. It's sort of a cross between sci-fi, fantasy, adventure, that sort of thing. So, our main character is Dr. Madeline Maxwell, everyone calls her Max, and she applies for a job at uh, the St. Mary's Institute for Historical Research. Um, what she doesn't realise at the time is that um, historians don't just sort of sift through old documents and stuff. Here at St Mary's they actually time travel and they witness the events themselves. So it follows her training and you know, her sort of first few assignments and stuff. Um, there, were, there were some problems I had with the plot um, and a lot of the characters I had trouble distinguishing who was who sometimes. So. That was a little bit frustrating, but it was a, it was a fun, light-hearted story, and for that reason, I gave it four out of five stars. Um, the next book I read was *Mirage* by Samaya Daud. 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 I'm not really sure. Uh, it is the first in a series, but we don't know how many books there are yet. It is sort of a YA sci-fi fantasy. It centers around a girl called Amani, who is a bit of a dreamer. She would like to sort of travel, leave her home planet slash moon, and travel the star system and the galaxy and that kind of thing. And she loves poetry. So yeah, a bit of a dreamer. On her coming of age day, she gets the opportunity to travel. She is abducted and taken to the royal palace. And she finds out that uh, she is going to be acting as a body double for the cruel and hated half Vathek and half Andalan princess Marim. So, basically, Princess Marim is not very nice. People want to kill her. And especially the Andalan uh, rebels. So, Amani's life sort of depends on being a good body double, but at the same time, her life's in danger every time she does appear as a body double, so it's a bit of a two-edged sword. Um, I, I received a, an electronic arc, from NetGalley uh, in exchange for an honest review and I will do a full review of this at some point soon so watch out for that if you are interested. Uh, just quickly, I, I really liked the plot, I liked the characters, they they were you know 3D, they, they had faults and flaws and Yeah, it was it was good. Um, the world building was great. I over, I really really enjoyed it. So I gave it four point five out of five stars. Um, I believe that it has come out now. So if you're interested in reading it, you can get a copy. Whether you buy it or borrow it or whatever. So yep. Uh, and the final book that I read this month, number fourteen. Powered through like the last half of it yesterday, so I could say I read it in August. 
um, was The Fate of the Teeling by Erica Johansson. It is the third and final book in the Teeling trilogy. It's YA dystopia fantasy. Uh, it follows the continuing story of Kelsey and you know, her trying to fix her kingdom and deal with the neighbouring kingdom that's sort of invading and is led by the Red Queen who is like a sorceress. Anyway, um, again like the other, the previous two books, the characters are, are the best part of this. They are written beautifully, like they're so complex and I loved that part of it. I enjoyed the plot and the world building, yeah. Um, uh, I'm, I'm still, I'm still trying to work out how I feel about the ending. I, no, nah, I, um, yeah, I, I'm a bit undecided about that whole thing. I can see why the author did that why they went there, I can see the setup for it and everything, looking back. It's just, it's not even a matter of what I expected. It, I don't know, I, I just, I'm not really a fan of the ending. I, I think that Erica Johansson could have done something else with it, but I will do a full review of this when I work out what the hell I'm, I'm thinking. So, I'm giving it a tentative rating of 3 out of 5 stars, but it's probably, probably going to head more towards the 2 by the time I've finished. So, that was the month of August. Total of 14 books I had, what, 7 4 star readings? So, and no DNFs, so I, it was a pretty good month. Thank you for watching, and if you liked my video, give me a thumbs up. And I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe as well. Um, and yeah, if you want notifications for future videos, there's a little bell that you can press for that. And I, again, thank you for watching, and I hope you find yourself here again. Bye.